Hi, I'm Richard for Fork, and today we're in Brick Lane, one of London's cultural gems. Known for its vibrant, ever changing surroundings, Brick Lane does for East London what Camden does for North London. Exciting exhibit, full of noise and colour, is the centre point for counterculture in London. Now, you might be forgiven for thinking that today the food we're going to be trying is of the spicy, the South Asian variety, but I think we've got other ideas. What we want to do is get to the bottom and find the true face of food culture in Britain. Every street, every community has its own story and personality, and these are the things that we intend to find out. Now we're about to head into the Turin Brewery. This is one of the highlights on Brick Lane on Sunday. This is home to some of the world's most exciting foods, all in one location. Pineapple, not seen very often. The first thing you notice is definitely the smell. The smell from the outside, but here is so strong. So good. From the incredible smell to the guy who gives you a nod look in the corner, vibrancy is the word that comes to mind when you're walking around the Truman Brewery. The stall set up aren't employing any great sales tactics other than the occasional free sample. The food speaks for itself and the majority of the cooks are just doing what comes naturally to them with the recipes that have been passed down through generations. Ultimately, it's the characters that bring you to Brick Lane, and specifically the Truman Brewery. With the amount of delicious food on offer all over London, the personality of the area is what has driven the popularity through the roof in recent years. If you want to play it safe and have what you're used to, you can have that. But you, you can push your limits if you want. It's, uh... yeah, Venezuelan food. First time we ate Venezuelan food was in Brick Lane. It's very good. We explore Brick Lane on a cold February morning, but once inside, you can really lose track of your surroundings. With every stall you walk past, you are offered a snapshot into an individual culture, washed over with the sounds of Southeast Asia, North and West Africa, and South America, which entices you further if the smells hadn't already. in particular was a Cuban sandwich, which really drove home the ideas of the chef inviting you to indulge their culture first hand. You could have failed to smell the Moho Marinette portrait and hear the boombox of every power of 100 plus people inside. <laughs> You can see the Truman Brewery building, so much food on our bar, but we can't hang around for too long. We still want more stalls to check out. If you do want to come here, I mean, the choice is unbelievable. There's foods that you probably didn't even realise existed here. I mean, I'm pretty sure everything is under a tenner if you want a quick lunch. Um, it's not just about the food, it's the people, the sound, the vibrancy of the whole area is, is brilliant. And that's a bigger reason it's coming, is for the food. Yeah, definitely check this place out. Now we'd love to show you the inside of Royal House Food Hall, but due to unforeseen circumstances. So now we're in the Boiler House Food Hall. Uh, it's a lot more relaxed than the Truman Brewery building. Perfect for the night. You just come up on the city 
down for lunch because I'm hard day shopping. I'm a little bit Still a great place to come for lunch though. If you've been shopping all day, you need somewhere to sit down. It's great. It's a little less busy than the brewery, so you'll be able to get some free samples before you actually buy something. And if you want to find out like, the background of the food and the chefs there at each store, you can probably do that. Now, the beauty of Brick Lane is on a Sunday, you've got the infamous Brick Lane market, which we'll be heading to. Similar to the Truman Brewery, it exemplifies the cultural diversity and variety that this part of London has at its disposal. The one difference is, is that there's some more high profile food stores that are set up in this market location, such as the Rib Man and the Pizza Pilgrim. We bet that any aspiring chef that started out on the store in Brooklyn more than likely began to make a name for himself in the market before transferring into the kitchen. One of the delicacies we tried was an exceptional mushroom ricotta ravioli, encapsulated Brooklyn. Restaurant quality food tied with an exciting urban atmosphere. Right, so we've already covered the market scene here at Brick Lane. There's one thing you can't get away from, and that's that abundance of curry houses. After all, Brick Lane is at the centre of the Bangladeshi community in London. There are over 20 restaurants on street alone, and that's led the area to be dubbed Bangla Town. All we know is that's just a great place to be. The strength of the Bangladeshi community cannot be shaken from Brick Lane, as can be seen from its sense of self regulation and celebration, partly due to the Brick Lane Master Competition. A yearly event where the finest people of Brooklyn's culinary cultures pick their skills against one another, culminating in the community deciding the victor. The best example of how significant a competition like this is, is that every restaurant showcases where it's placed in separate years. Every curry house flaunts its accolades and places an exuberant salesman coaxing you into their respective establishments. A day out in Brooklyn isn't complete without being approached by one of London's most underappreciated salesmen. That was our take on Rick Lane. Thank you for watching Food Before. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe and we'll see you again next time.